guys, welcome to my channel. So I had a request to show you guys how I made my paper ruffle rolls as well as some of the other uh, paper rolls and fabric rolls that I was making. So this is the paper ruffle roll and um, this is probably the easiest one <clears throat> that I can show you. I feel like I'm losing my voice. I'm sorry, guys, if I clear my throat a lot in this video. <laughs> we went on vacation um, last week, and then I came back, and like all my allergies started acting up. And I guess it might have had something to do with the Saharan dust situation, too. So I don't know, but I'm, I'm just, I feel fine. I'm just, I have to clear my throat like every five seconds. Um, so this is the other kind of paper scrap roll that I made. Um, none of these ideas are original. I got these from other YouTubers. Um, but I will show you how I made mine. Uh, they might be slightly different from um, the ones that I saw on YouTube. So, um, so that's the second one that I'm going to show you guys. This is just a uh, just paper scraps that I have sewn together as well. And then the last one that I will show you guys is uh, the fabric snippet roll, which obviously there are a million videos on the snippet roll, and everybody does them differently. Um, I'll show you how I did mine. It's super simple as well. And um, so, yeah. So I have written out instructions for um, both types of paper rolls. And I have also written out instructions for the fabric rolls just to make this a little bit easier. Um, so we'll start with the paper ruffle roll. So you're only going to need two things for uh, the paper ruffle roll. And, well, actually three things. You're going to need a base strip. And these, I just cut strips from tea dyed paper. Um, if you already have... Um, strips of paper like this in your stash and you just kind of keep all your scrap paper like I do, then uh, that will make it very easy for you to do this. But um, these are just strips of paper and I actually tea dyed paper and then cut out the strips. Um, you certainly don't have to do that. Just use what you have. But these strips are uh, about one to two inches. These uh, in particular are one inch and I think these look better um, a little bit thinner so I I opt for the one inch but you could certainly do a two inch uh, roll but this is going to be your base paper so you're going to want to make this base paper the width that you want your roll uh, <clears throat> so these in particular are one inch strips of tea dyed paper you don't have to use tea dyed paper you can use any paper that you have um, you could even use scrapbook paper or, or some other kind of specialty paper if you wanted to. Um, I just think tea dyed paper looks nice and it's, it all kind of brings the scrap strips together. Um, I have like a, a various amount of different colors of scrapbook paper, so I wanted it to look cohesive in some way. So I just opted for uh, tea dyed paper, but but however you want to do it is fine. So that's your base strip and then you're also going to need to gather some top strips. Now these are scrapbook paper strips and most of these I already had. They were just off cuts from when I was making journals. Um, <clears throat> but you're going to need several of these as well. And the only thing uh, that you need to make sure of is that the top strip is thinner than the bottom strip. So are, these are essentially going to just go one on top of the other like this and then we're going to ruffle it from there. So um, these in particular are scrapbook papers um, that are about a half an inch wide. Um, it doesn't really matter. You can do you know, you can do thinner than this if you wanted to, or thicker than this if you wanted to. Um, the only thing is you want the top piece to be thinner than the bottom piece. So, um, that's it. That's all you need to make the ruffle rolls. <clears throat> and, um, 
You could do this with a sewing machine if you have one. If you don't have one, you could certainly do this with glue as well. I think it might take a little bit longer if you do it with glue, but um, you know, whatever you have, use what you have. Um, that's essentially the whole point of these <clears throat> rolls to begin with was that I wanted to use up the scraps that I had. I just had a bunch of leftover pieces from all kinds of projects and it, it just kind of collects in a big box and then eventually I run out of room and I need to use them. So so use what you have. Definitely don't go out and buy new stuff for this. Um, what I did when I picked out my scrapbook paper that, uh, that I make into the top strips, I essentially just chose a bunch of papers that I thought uh, the colors would look nice together. And um, I just basically put um, similarly colored papers together and then cut strips out of those or, you know, uh, modified the width of those strips. So um, that's all you have to do. So let me take you over to my sewing machine and uh, I'll show you the next step. Okay guys, so this is what we do. Um, <clears throat> The first thing we do is we're going to take our base strips, whatever those may be. They could be book pages or tea dyed paper or whatever you're using. And we're going to take our first uh, thin top strip and we're going to put that um, over the top of the base strip. And it doesn't matter if it's not straight. You could have it over here or whatever. Um, as I go along, I tend to straighten it out as much as possible. Uh, but I kind of like the way it looks when it's not perfect. So, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my hand all in the camera. <laughs> and I'm just going to do a couple of uh, stitches. And then I'm going to back stitch. And then from here, um, <clears throat> I'll show you what I'm doing up here. This is where my stitches are. So I just chose like a... Uh, a larger um, zigzag stitch but you can use whatever kind of stitch you want uh, it could be like a fancy stitch or you know if your sewing machine is capable of doing more fancy stitches than mine then you can certainly choose one of those uh, or you could just straight stitch all the way down it really doesn't matter <clears throat> and so just choose a stitch that you like and then we're going to begin so all I do is I did I ran a few stitches and then I back stitched just to get started and get my thread in there and kind of keep it from pulling out and then all I do is I pinch it so that I can fold it over just like this and I'm gonna do that along the entire length of this strip <clears throat> And I kind of just go a little bit, pinch and fold, go a little bit more, pinch and fold. Okay, so right here I wanted to show you, this is not perfectly even <clears throat> of a fold. So um, when this happens, it could get kind of wonky and start going this way, or this way, either way. Um, <clears throat> and it, it doesn't matter. It actually looks a lot cooler when it happens like this all I do is I go ahead and run through with some stitches and then I just straighten out this one this next fold so um, if I need to take it up a little bit more on this side then I can do that and straighten out the strip um, or you can just leave it as it is it really doesn't matter I think it looks a lot better this way honestly rather than just perfectly straight uh, folds all along the strip. Okay, so now that we're at the end of this uh, top strip, I'm going to go ahead and add my next strip. And I'm just going to add it under the fold, of under the last fold, if that makes sense. Just like that. Run a few stitches and then go ahead and fold this up as well. And now I'm at the end of my base strip, so I'm going to go ahead and add a new base strip under this top strip. 
and I, t I put it over the end of the last base strip and under the top strip. <laughs> Just like that. So you can still see the top strip, but the base strip and where it ends is no longer visible. And then just keep pinching, folding over. And then add more paper as you need it. See, I'm kind of getting off track here. I just kind of push it back over. It doesn't matter that the stitches aren't straight. None of that matters. And we just keep going and going and going and you can make a, a ruffle as long as you want. Um, I'm actually going to cut it here because I want to show you this other um, paper roll as well, and I think my thread is getting caught too. So I'm just going to snip this and I'll show you real quick. So this is all uh, that we just did, and obviously you can keep going forever or as long as you want or for however many strips you want to use. So. Um, that's the paper ruffle roll and so now I'm going to uh, take you back over to my table and show you the next paper roll. Okay guys, so for the second paper scrap roll, all I've done is I have cut um, some scrap paper into two inch tall pieces of various widths. Now you don't have to do them in various widths, you can make them all the same width if you prefer it that way. I just like the way it looks. So that's the way I did it. Um, these are actually a little bit taller than two inches. You can make it as tall as you want. You could have great big, uh, a great big roll if you wanted to, or you can make a great big roll and then cut it in half or something like that if you wanted to. Um, but I, I just, I made them a little bit smaller just for um, the scraps that I already had. So this is actually two inches here. Uh, so I would say that this roll is probably three inches tall. So it doesn't really matter how, t how tall you make it. I made mine into two inch tall pieces this time. Um, and all you do is we're just going to um, glue the pieces together. And I'm just going to use my glue stick to do that. And the reason why I'm gluing them down is so that I can actually pick this roll up and take it to my sewing machine and sew through it later. So, um, so like I said, all we're going to do is we're just going to take a little bit of glue and I'm just going to put it like right on the edge of this scrap and then just stick the next one down, whatever I think looks nice together. And then just keep going until I've used up all of my scrap pieces. And obviously you can make this one as long as you want as well. It does not matter. And let's see what I want to use next. So um, we're just going to glue these pieces down in whatever order we want, doesn't matter. And sometimes I can like go over the top. Um, if I feel like maybe it would be cool to have something in between there, something like that. Um, there's not really any rules to this. You just kind of stick things where you feel like they look nice. And then once you've done all of your scraps and you have them all in a row and, um, and you glue them all together and the glue has dried, make sure that the glue is dry before you do this. Um, but once the glue is dry, you can run this through the sewing machine. And all I did was I made a stitch, a zigzag stitch going straight down um, my, my strip or my roll. So I just fed it through the sewing machine and went straight down. Um, 
You can, however, do um, horizontal stitches if you prefer, maybe stitch along each individual scrap. Um, that's completely up to you. I'm just lazy and I did it the super fast and easy way. <laughs> um, so that is that. And then from this point, um, with either one of these, the paper ruffle roll or the, or the paper scrap roll, which is what I'm gonna call it, um, you can decorate them, you can cut them where you want them and maybe just take a portion or whatever and, um, and decorate them however you want. So I was thinking that if you used like just a piece of this on the edge or on the top or bottom of a page, uh, you know, say this was your journal page, you could use it like along the edge there or, you know, just frame the page somehow. Um, or you could use it um, as just like a little decoration on a page, maybe put a button on it or something like that, or um, just make a little mini collage. Uh, the Tim Holtz stuff really works well on these because they're a lot of the times they're small. Or you could make this into like a little tab for your page, like and just cut off a little piece of this and use it as a tab. So there's tons of different ways you could use these. Uh, same with these, these can be used in the exact same way as an edge uh, for your page or maybe as a tab if you folded it um, or whatever. So uh, maybe even you could cover up the back because this is kind of how the back looks uh, when you finish. There's sometimes you use like double-sided paper and that comes through. Um, so you could cover up the back and maybe use it as like a journaling card if you made it wider. Uh, you could make it as like a little tag and tag topper. So the possibilities are endless, but um, those are the paper rolls. And now I'm going to quickly show you how to do the fabric snippet rolls my way. Um, like I said, I'm super lazy, so this is probably not the exact right way to do a fabric snippet roll, but uh, I'll show you nonetheless. Okay guys, so uh, for the fabric snippet roll, I'm gonna just kind of give you a basic um, understanding of how to do this. Um, I probably won't go all the way through the list of things to do because it will take uh, quite a long time and I feel like this video is probably long enough. Um, but I am going to uh, at least guide you through these and show you a little bit about what I'm doing. Okay, so the first thing I've done is I'm taking a large piece of thin fabric and um, this is actually a fabric sack towel. You could also use uh, muslin, cotton, or something like that. Whatever you have, um, it could even be like a print fabric if you want it to be. Um, but I'll show you what I got. This is from Walmart, and I just got it out of the uh, out of the fabric section. And it's just like it comes in a little package of two uh, sheets of fabric, um, and they just they're about as long as I need them to be. Uh, I've cut this one down so that it is the height of my um, heat and bond, which is this here. I use a uh, heat and bond uh, feather light, um, basically an iron-on adhesive. And this is not necessary. You could certainly use uh, like glue on here. Um, you would just really, really, really have to make sure that your glue is dry before you put it through your sewing machine. Um, so this is what I use because this is safe for my sewing machine. You want to get the light version, whatever light version uh, you get, if you do plan on getting this. Um, but, you know, you can do it however you want to do it. You don't have to use the heat and bond. Um, I just happen to have some, so... So yeah, I'm using a flower sack towel. Um, I have cut it down to the height of my heat and bond. This is about two feet wide. So the first thing I do is I'm going to take my heat and bond and I'm going to lay it blue side down. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to, um, I'm going to iron this out just a little bit because I feel like it's been crinkled up quite a bit. 
So let me iron this out really fast. And I've, I've just got this sitting on my ironing board just to make this a little bit easier. So we're just gonna iron this out really fast. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, also, I don't really measure anything in this process. So, I mean, this is basically just to use up my scraps. So whatever you have, if you have, um, you know, old worn out fabric that's holy or whatever, <laughs> it doesn't matter. You can use that too. Um, this is just your base. This is just to keep everything kind of together so you can run it through your sewing machine. So this part really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you use. Okay. So I've gone over that with my iron. I'm gonna put the glue side of the heat and bond down. That's the more glossy side. This is the paper side. So the glossy side goes down. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to put two pages down for now. I will end up finishing this. My plan for this particular uh, fabric roll is to actually use it as a journal cover, so I don't want to do what I normally do with this um, So as you can see here, I'll show you real quick as you can see this fabric roll is a lot uh, Smaller than obviously the fabric that I have sitting here and the reason why is because I cut this fabric into fourths so uh, so I can make several essentially pieces to my fabric roll and then sew them all together and that's all I've really done but for this one I'm actually not going to cut it at all because I want to make this into a journal cover so let me kind of scoot down here so you can see what I'm doing I'm just lining these up as close as possible doesn't really matter it's not that serious it's really not that serious I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, but you, you don't have to be like me. <laughs> and then um, basically follow the directions of your heat and bond if you're using heat and bond. Obviously if you're using glue or something like that, then you don't even have to worry about this step. I am not a sewer and I am never successful with my heat and bond, but I at least get a little bit of glue on there so that the stuff won't move that I put down at the bottom. So. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. I can attest to that. So I'm just gonna go over this until it basically fuses with the fabric. And this is going to be uh, your glue for the fabric that you lay on top of this. I hope I'm making sense. I'm never really thought that I was that great at tutorials, but. <laughs> Hopefully you're understanding what I'm doing and it makes a bunch of weird sounds. I Don't know why I guess it's just like things are fusing. It just it sounds like it's working, which is always a good sign <laughs> Okay, so I think it's good and at this point we're just gonna let this kind of cool off a little bit and then I'm going to peel the paper off and then we can start putting down our fabrics so we've already taken our large piece of thin fabric um, like I said, that can be muslin, that can be uh, the flower sack towel if you can find that at your Walmart. Um, and then whatever fabric you're using, just cut it down to the width and the height that you want it. It can be as long, as tall, it doesn't matter. There's no rules for that. And then you're just going to go ahead and iron on your heat and bond or um, you can just go ahead and start gluing down your fabric pieces at this point. Um, your fabric pieces can be anything, literally anything. I have uh, some smaller pieces here. This is just like a teeny, tiny little scrap. I've got some really ugly scraps here that uh, I can certainly use in this and you won't even know. Uh, so just whatever. I have a, a little scrap of a doily that I cut apart a long time ago. So all of these uh, things are fine. You can also, if you don't have a lot of fabric scraps and you just happen to have fabric laying around, you can cut them into strips. And I have several strips here. Um, this may be easier if you want your, uh, when you cut this apart, if you want them to be cohesive. 
Um, that way you don't have like a little piece of this up here and a little piece of this down here and you don't have any of this down here when you cut it. I uh, hope that makes sense. So I, I tend to like the strips more just because I know that I'm going to get a little piece of this fabric on every uh, strip that I cut out of this big piece. Um, so there's that. Uh, really doesn't matter what you use. You can use anything you want. Um, at this point, we're just focusing on the fabric. At the end, that's when we can start adding embellishments um, like metal embellishments or, or what have you. Um, so, I think this is cooled off enough. We can go ahead and peel this heat and bond off of here. And it looks like it took well. So that makes me super happy. It never takes well. It worked today. So, I don't know, maybe I went over it less than I usually do because I'm, I'm never really sure and I'm like, I want to make sure that, this, that the glue is stuck down well. <laughs> and so maybe I go over it too much and then the glue like dries up or something. I don't know if that's a thing, but this time it worked perfectly. So, um, so that's awesome. And now we can go ahead and just start laying down our scraps. So it doesn't matter um, how you do this. You just lay them down in whatever order or whatever way you want to. You could do it horizontally, you could do it vertically, however you want to do it is perfectly fine. I kind of tend to layer mine uh, over top of each other and that's okay too if you want to do that. Um, literally there are no rules to this. Um, the one thing that I would recommend is putting down your bigger stuff first. That way, um, when it comes time to possibly having to pin things down, you will have the stuff that you need to pin down right on the top so you can see it. Um, that's just my, my word to the wise. Okay guys, so I'm going to stop here. I will end up finishing this and you'll see the finished product um, a little bit later, but um, I just want to show you the next few steps um, because I, I, I'm scared that this video is going to be ever long. So the next thing I do, once I get all of my fabric where I want it, and uh, like I said, you can go in and fill in all of these little gaps, which is what I'm going to do uh, over some time. Um, and it does take quite a bit of time. I'll go ahead and forewarn you that now. You'll get super nitpicky about it and you'll want to move stuff around. And that's the good thing about the heat and bond is it's not glued down yet. So, um, so it has to be activated by heat. So you can pick these up and move them around as much as you want uh, right now. Um, but uh, let me just go ahead and show you the next few steps. So once you've gotten your fabric everywhere uh, that you want it, then the next step would be to iron your fabric onto the heat and bond so the heat and bond activates and it sticks it uh, down to the fabric. And um, so as you might have seen me do here is I have a strip of fabric on top of these two pieces of fabric and it's not actually touching the heat and bond. So what I do here is since this isn't going to stick to my base fabric, I'm going to just pin that when I take it to my sewing machine just to make sure that that doesn't come up. And you can do that to any pieces that are not actually touching the heat and bond and are not actually adhered to the base fabric. It is up to you whether you want to cut it now or whether you want to sew this whole piece first and then cut it apart. That's completely up to you. I found it easier to run it through my sewing machine in strips 
So I actually cut it, um, if, you're, if you plan on cutting it, I cut it at this point once I have all my fabric down and it's all glued down. And then I make sure that any loose pieces are pinned down and then I'll take it to my sewing machine. Um, as far as the sewing machine goes, the, the only thing I can tell you is it really doesn't matter how you stitch. And I'm gonna show you this one as an example. So on this roll, I actually stitched down several of the uh, panels, like just down here on each panel. But then I also went through it and just kind of did some like crazy wonky stitches just all over the place. And then I also ran a stitch straight down the strip. So uh, as far as stitching, the only goal at the end of the day is to just make sure that everything is caught on the fabric. Um, if anything kind of sticks up or anything like that, then you want to make sure that you catch that with a stitch or two. Um, if you have an embroidery machine, then that makes this, or a quilting machine, that makes this super easy. You can do some like crazy cool doodles all over it in your stitches. Um, if you just have a basic sewing machine like me, um, you can get an embroidery, um, an embroidery uh, foot, um, which is something that I have. I have not actually tried it. I actually made this whole fabric roll with just my basic walking foot. So, um, so this is certainly possible with just a walking foot. Um, and even making like swirlies and all, all that good stuff, um, that's possible with a walking foot as well. So um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then just go crazy with the sewing machine. <laughs> and, um, and to be honest, you don't even need a sewing machine for this. If you wanted to just glue the pieces down, make sure that they're adhered well to your base fabric, you don't even need to sew it. It's not a, um, it's not a requirement for this. Um, and I have not actually tried to just glue it down, but I would assume that it will work just as well. Um, so after you have everything sewn down, then, then you can go through and add um, some little embellishments and whatnot. So this one actually does not have any metal embellishments. I did put a few little, um, this is muslin that I've just stamped on and I just uh, sewed that onto uh, onto the roll here and there. Um, so this one actually doesn't have any any metal embellishments. The other one that I had does. Oh, nope, I lied. Just kidding. It does have a few little metal embellishments. And all I did was I just hooked this on with a jump ring. With one of those little loops. Um, and it's split at one spot, so you basically you just pull it apart. You go like this and pull it apart. And then you can put little charms on it here and there. I also sewed on a couple of buttons um, here and there as well. So whatever you want to put on it is totally up to you. Here's another uh, little stamped image that I sewed on. And another one here. So these are acting more so as my embellishments for this particular roll. Um, but just get creative. Put, put whatever you want on there. You can put safety pins through it or um, you can stamp stamp stuff on it. You can stamp stuff directly on your fabric if you wanted to do that. You can add a little bit of lace here and there. Just whatever, whatever your heart desires. <laughs> so, um, so that is the last step. That's when you start adding your embellishments. And then at that point, you can do whatever you want with it. Um, I've seen people use snippet rolls to make little pockets in their junk journal or to make tabs on the side of their journal or, you know, just the same as the paper ruffle roll. You can use it as like an edging on your page, uh, whatever you want to do with it. So, um, so yeah, I hope that was informative and at least you got a little something out of it. I know I didn't do the full snippet roll um, because this video is going to be ever long as it is, but I did want you to at least see the materials that I used. Um, and yeah, so that's it. So 
Um, I hope you enjoyed that video, and I will see you next time. I plan on having lots of stuff to journal about, and I also plan on bringing my kids in on a video very soon, so you will see at least their little hands in the video, <laughs> and I will see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.